Hey everybody, good morning, and welcome back to Rock Talk with Ellie. This is where I just talk about rocks, earth sciences, geology-based topics, rocks, minerals, and that kind of thing, and I share with you my knowledge. This is one cut, one take, and it's just me. Today I'm out in the beautiful Arizona high desert around some pretty granite batholiths, some beautiful just nature, and I wanted to talk to you about a topic that I think that a lot of people should know about or hear more about because of some things that have happened to me recently, just about asking me questions about geology, the job force, and what to do with a geology degree. So I get asked a lot through individual consultations and or uh, different events that I talk at, what can you do with a geology degree? What do I need to focus on? What classes should I make sure that I take in order to secure a job in the geology market or the field of geology? And uh, I was, I guess, shocked when I was talking to people that they didn't know these things. So I wanted to come on here and tell you about it because I think that you should know and I think that it should be a resource for people. Again, I do individual one-on-one -on -one consultations with people, and then I will go and give big talks on geology, just depending on who hires me. So there's that. Anyways, the things that you need to know, I guess, about being a geology student is it's tough work. If you're there already, you already know how challenging it is. For some people, it's physics. For some people, it's the amount of math that you have to take. For some people, it's the actual physical geology classes that they just can't wrap their head around. And then on top of it, specializing in a certain topic. Like for me, it was economic geology, mineral assemblages and structures. I really loved all those topics, but I also knew that going into mining, I would need to know those topics very well. So an economic geologist is basically somebody who breaks down mineral assemblages and can tell a mine or an individual person if they have something on their property or their claim or mine that is going to be economical to mine. Meaning those mineral assemblages are going to give them something like silver, copper, gold, molybdenum, along those lines. So that's economic geology. And you have to know a ton of stuff in order to just obtain that knowledge and then pass it on to the work field. But what should you take in college? Well, you need to figure out the part of geology that you want to focus on. Maybe it's dewatering in a mine. Well, you'll need plenty of hydrology. You'll need some form of slope stability classes. You'll need to also know your structures. Um, maybe it's economic geology. So you're going to need, you know, petrology, advanced petrology, economic geology. You're going to need geomorphology. You're going to need geophysics. You're going to um, need mineralogy classes, like as, as many as you can handle. And then, you know, just depending on those different fields you want to get into, the best thing I can say is research what the job you want is looking for and then tailor your classes to suit that. Maybe it's a lot of archaeology or um, ArcGIS or LIDAR for any different mapping like software that the company that you want to work for is looking at. Now, speaking of companies you want to look at or, or work for, go on LinkedIn. Yes, that's still a thing. Look people up on LinkedIn. See who their colleagues are. See who they work with. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever they might be. Follow them and engage with them. Don't come right out and say, oh, I want a job with your company. I'm a great fit. That's not what you want to do. You want to create a relationship with these people. So like their posts, comment on them, follow what they do, take an interest in the things that they like. And then if you're following them, you're going to see if there are job posts, especially at career fairs. Find out who those people are that go to the career fairs. I mean, by name, go and talk to them at your college career fair and follow those people because most likely there's some kind of a headhunter involved. It doesn't mean like headhunter. It means somebody who is looking to hire a group of people or an individual based on their skills. 
So they're looking for that resume or they're looking for that specific type of person. So a uh, headhunter is always a good person to have as a contact. But those college reps for different companies are going to be present at those college fairs. And maybe your college doesn't have a good enough college fair or job fair, excuse me. Go be a visitor at a different college that has a good job fair because more likely than not, the business that you wanna work for is going to go to that college job fair than the one at your college. And also picking the right college that has the right degree program or the right amount of classes that you want is gonna be very important. Look at the curriculum, break it down into the credits that you wanna take. If the program seems great, but they don't have the classes that you're going to need to get the job that you want, then the, that college program probably isn't for you. But keep a revolving door of contacts. Create relationships with those companies that you would like. Now, another question that gets asked a lot is what were the opportunities that you had uh, either as an internship or at a job and what did the job look like when you got there? Well, I guess my geology job experience was very different. I work for the state in a co-op, which means it's a, a really, really long internship. And then I had a couple different internships with the mining company that I wanted to work with. I would always go to any interview or mock interview that the college fair, job fair would allow. And these were with different companies. Um, you know, Barrick, Newmont, Gold Corp, um, uh, Freeport. There, there's uh, other ones that I went to that I'm forgetting the names of, but those are the ones right off the top of my head that I remember going to and just acing their interviews. So much so that I, one year, I think I got four internship offers and I picked the best one that suited me. But I knew what I wanted. And that is something that's really important because when you're in the interview, they're gonna know if you really want that job. It's gonna be in your passion, the way you talk about it. Um, maybe you don't have all of the knowledge that you need or that you think you need because you haven't taken some of those upperclassmen college classes yet, but you're going to. And you can tell them your enthusiasm about taking those classes and what you think that it's going to do for you. One other thing that, um, oh man, right right on the tip of my tongue that I was thinking about it had to do with job fairs but it, it'll come back to me so I'll circle back uh something else the what did the internship look like so when I had my first mining internship it felt like a breeze honestly I felt like I got to do anything and everything and kind of I did essentially I got to go look at every form of the mining operation as a new intern. And what I mean by that is if I wanted to go see how the mill worked one day, I could. If I wanted to go see how the blasting crew worked one day, that's also what I did. If I wanted to spend time with the lead geologist and go out in the field and just look for minerals all day, FYI, I got to collect a lot of really cool minerals as an intern. Um, if I wanted to see how the mapping program went, or what the field geologist did, or what slopes did, or um, of what the blasting crew did as they were sampling, what the sample geologist did. You name it, I got to do it. But what was really cool is your internship at a mining company, if that's where you wanna go, because that's the route I took. That internship is a three month interview. They wanna see how well you're gonna work with the crew. They wanna see how flexible you are. They they want you to be enthusiastic about the knowledge that you have, but they want you to be okay if you don't know what you're doing. So ask questions, be open. If you get embarrassed easily, that's fine too, but don't have an attitude about it. Go into it with an open mind and flexibility. If they want you to work long hours, you need to work long hours. If they want you to be there at 5 a.m., be there at 5 a.m. I'm not a morning person but I did it because it's what the job required and I wanted to make a great first impression. Now, the job title going into that after I was offered a full-time job looked very different. They chose where you were going to start based on your skills, the knowledge they thought you had, and of course, kind of 
not necessarily how you ranked in your internship, but because of what people said during your internship. So I didn't necessarily get to start in the position that I wanted to when I was going into being a mine geologist, but it was a definitely a high salary. And that's one thing I was looking for. I was looking to earn the most money out of college that I possibly could to pay off my student loans, to get myself set up in such a way that I could do the things that I wanted to do. And at no point in time did I ever think that that was going to lead me to be doing to what I do today. I had no idea. I thought that was going to be my life. I thought I was going to be in upper management at a huge mining company and lead future geologists. Well, I guess I lead future geologists now in a different way, but it's not with a mining company. It wasn't for me. My strong voice, my opinion, and my passion for what I was doing didn't mix well with the men that I was working with. And unfortunately, their large egos and the way that they viewed women in the mining industry wasn't okay with me. And I needed to leave. So that's exactly what I did. So for the past four and a half, almost five years now, I've been doing my own thing as an independent consultant, um, you know, an economic geologist, a YouTube content creator, and a, you know, a bunch of other titles and hats that I wear. But I love what I do. And what I did in college, getting the internships that I did, getting the job that I did, allowed me to do exactly what I'm doing today. Sitting here in nature, having a beautiful conversation with you all and just enjoying my surroundings. Yes, working for myself has been the most difficult thing that I have ever done in my life. It doesn't pay for nothing, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. And so you need to be happy with the choice that you're going to make. One other thing I can touch on is your field camp in college. If you get the opportunity to take field camp and do the six to eight week field camp course all on its own, do that. Don't take the weekend program. And the only reason I say that is field camp is where you truly get to test your geology knowledge. It's where you actually get to go out and rely on your skills that you learned in college. If you take field camp as the weekend course like some colleges offer, I think you're going to cheat yourself because you're not really gonna get that experience. The, you're still missing some of those skills that you might need. And so if you can, take the longer course. I highly, highly recommend it. It's something that I could take again. Um, me and Danny, you've seen her on my channel, I love her to death. She also agrees she would definitely go back and take field camp again. It's something that's fun. It's not like a place where you're gonna make lifelong friends, although you could. Uh, it is a place though where you really get to understand geology. And another thing, unless you've gone out and practiced geology after college, like I'm so glad if you're getting that college degree, that's amazing. But just because you have the degree with a title on a diploma that says geology doesn't make you a geologist yet. Getting your feet wet, out in the field, doing real field work, where your signature matters on a piece of paper, where you're responsible for that geology decision that you made, that's when you're a geologist. So believe me, I'm not knocking getting out of college and going and getting that, that first job, that's awesome. But once you make those hard decisions and you're actually practicing what you learned in college, then you're a geologist. And even though school teaches you a lot, it doesn't teach you anything in comparison to what you're going to learn out in the field and on the site. Book smarts and book knowledge is amazing. Knowing how to use those fundamentals is really crucial, but you're really going to know like the nuts and bolts of it once you're out in the dirt. Boots on the ground, hands in the dirt, filthy from head to toe, freezing cold, boiling hot, but using those geology skills and really, really, really thinking critically about what you learn in a classroom because it's completely different once you're out in the wild. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this rock talk and I'll see you on the next one.